So I'm not going to, I, I didn't rehearse this video, I'm just going to go for it. And I've actually never done this, but I assume it's going to work. Right now we have two buffers. Okay, one of the buffers stores the cube vertex data and the arrow vertex data. And then the second buffer stores the cube index data and the arrow index data. And as I was getting done with the last video, I thought, you know, I could really just stick all the data in the one buffer. It shouldn't really matter. And then for the array buffer binding point, I could bind that buffer to that one binding point, and then for the element array buffer binding point, I could bind that buffer to that binding point as well, so I'll have one buffer bound to two binding points. Something that I've never tried before, and I'm not sure it'll work, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. It seems like it should work, so let's do that. I'm going to say the vertex buffer ID. Instead of saying the vertex buffer ID, I'm going to say the buffer ID. We'll get rid of our index buffer ID. We'll still need our array objects for the attribute data calls, but now we have the buffer ID. And then we'll gen buffers for the buffer ID. We'll bind the buffer ID to the array buffer binding point. And then buffer data, well, we shall need enough data for the cube vertex buffer size plus the cube dot index buffer size plus the arrow vertex buffer size, plus the arrow index buffer size. And then we'll subdata down the cube vertex data. We'll subdata down the arrow vertex data. You know what? Before we do that, though, let's, let's say GL buffer subdata. I'll just put the cube indices right after the cube vertices. So we'll have one buffer. We'll have the cube vertex data and then the cube index data. And then we'll do the arrow vertex data and the arrow index data. So we'll keep this diagram up there to keep us straight. So buffer sub data, GL array buffer. The buffer that's bound to the GL array buffer binding point. The offset needs to be past the cube vertex data. So I'll say cube dot vertex buffer size. Then the size of the data we're going to send down will be the cube index data. So cube dot index buffer size. Then the actual data we'll send down is cube dot indices like so. And now we need to put the arrow vertex data in. So GL buffer sub data, GL array. <laughs> buffer. The offset needs to be past the cube vertex data and past the cube index data. So I think what I'll do is just track the offset as we go. I'll say GL size pointer, which I believe is just a type def for an int. Yeah, it's a, that's an int. Okay. So, oops, I'll keep that open. GL size pointer, uh, current current offset. We'll start that out at zero. And then when we sub data, we'll sub data down to the current offset. So to begin with, the current offset will be pointing here at the beginning. And then once we send down the cube vertex data, I want to say current offset plus equals cube dot vertex buffer size which will move our current offset over to point to right here, which is exactly where I want to send the cube index data. So I'll say current offset like that. And then we want to move our current offset to over here. Instead of pointing at the buffer offset for the index data, we're done with the index data. We just sent that down. So let's move the current offset into the arrow vertex area. So current offset plus equals cube dot index buffer size. And then buffer sub data, the offset will be the current offset. The size will be arrow, arrow dot index buffer size. And the data will be, not index buffer size, sorry, vertex buffer size. And then 
we'll do arrow dot vertices and then again we want to move our current offset past the data that we just sent down to OpenGL so that will be the arrow vertex buffer size that will change our current offset from here to down whoops I went a little bit too far to down to right here essentially right here that's this right there and then same thing again I could probably just get rid of this one since I'm typing them all out anyway. GL buffer subdata. I want to send this data down to the GL array buffer binding point at the current offset. The size of the data will be the arrow index buffer size. And then the data will be arrow dot indices. Wow. What a workout. And then we don't need to generate the second buffer and then what's interesting actually before I delete this line we were sending our data down our index data through the element array buffer binding point but really these binding buffer points are just points it doesn't really matter how I get the data down there now we're sending the index data down through the GL array buffer binding point the only thing that this GL element array buffer binding point matters is when we say GL draw elements Whatever buffer is bound to that buffer binding point, man, that is hard to say. Whatever buffer is bound to that binding buffer point is the buffer that we'll take the index data from. So it doesn't matter that I've mixed and matched here. Anyway, let's get rid of this. Cube, num indices, arrow num indices, generate the vertex array. Now I'll say, we'll say GL bind buffer to the buffer ID, vertex a trib pointer for the cube. This is the cube. Uh, the cube starts at zero, which is still true. The cube vertex data starts at zero. And the uh, color data starts at three times the float, so not very far into this. And then for the element array buffer, we want to use the exact same buffer, the buffer ID, like so. And then we'll do the arrow vertex array object. We'll also bind to the buffer ID. And then these are trib pointer calls are going to be a little bit different because for the arrow vertex data, the attributes start here, which is zero. And then for the color data, it's three times the size of a float, what we're used to. But we need to get past all this cube data, the cube vertex data and the cube index data. So, so right here, I'll say uh, GL uint arrow byte offset gets cube dot vertex buffer size plus cube dot index buffer size. That's all the bytes required for the vertex data and the index data. And I could say arrow byte offset. Uh, I can replace this with arrow byte offset. And then this one right here, I can say arrow byte offset as well. And then for the element array buffer, I'm going to bind to the buffer ID, the only buffer, the one and only buffer that we have created. And the last thing we need to do is keep track of this part right here for when we call GL draw elements we have to send that byte offset in. Remember that kind of a pain in the neck thing we need to do. And that it will be the arrow byte offset plus the size of this data here. Arrow byte offset right now is pointing right here and I need to get it down to the index data so I need to add the size of the arrow vertex data and we'll, we'll we'll do that here this is the arrow index data byte offset we already have that variable from the last video so let's do that we'll come here and say arrow byte offset plus arrow dot vertex buffer size wow what a headache Okay, but we have one buffer. That buffer is bound to both the array buffer binding point and the element array buffer binding point. We have our attribs, we have our vertex arrays. I totally didn't rehearse this or try this, so let's control a five and hope it works. And looks like the arrow's good, but the cubes aren't showing up. So the arrow drawing at least tells us, hey, we can have index data and vertex data into one buffer, and we can have that one buffer bound to two binding points and it works just fine but I'm not quite sure why the cubes didn't show up so hold on for a sec while I figure it out okay stupid me I 
And notice when we say GL draw elements for the cube, I'm assuming the cube data starts out at zero. The index data starts out at zero because it did when the index data was in its own buffer. But now the cube index data is offset into the buffer. It's no longer at the beginning of our buffer. So we have to keep track of that. And we'll do that alongside with the arrow index data byte offset. I'll hit F12 and I'll do Control L, Control V, V. And we'll say this is the cube cube index data byte offset control minus a few times to get back to where we were at and the cube index data byte offset gets the size of the cube vertex data so cube dot vertex data buffer size and then I need to use that variable when we render the cube we'll cast this to avoid star and paste that there same thing here, void star, and paste it there as well. Control F5. Hopefully this fixes the problem. And there you go. We have our cubes and our arrow. And we're using one buffer, and I didn't even rehearse that video, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. That's actually kind of cool. I've never tried that, but that makes sense. And I really want to drive that home that... These binding buffer points, there's, there's really nothing special about them. They're just enums. They're just numbers. I can click on this and head of 12 and uh, array buffer is this value and element array buffer is this value. And, and the name array buffer doesn't necessarily mean we can only put vertex data in there. We can put whatever data we want in there. These are just binding points. And the names only have meaning to us as programmers. And OpenGL couldn't care less.